The Afsluit dike is leveling up. This Dutch icon of hydraulic engineering is getting a well-deserved upgrade. The first major one in 90 years. Time to take a look at what we're doing to make sure that the dike that closes off never shuts down. You're watching Waterworks, a series of educational videos about the Afsluit dike, in which we take a closer look at this beloved dam. Despite the fact that the Dutch name refers to it as a dike, it is actually a dam, which closes off parts of the sea surrounding the Netherlands. We'll talk about a man that even Einstein himself referred to, about a very old school way of laying countless stones by hand, and new travel destinations for fish. Buckle up. To fully appreciate what makes the Afsluit Dyke special, we need to look at the bigger picture because it's so much more than just a defense against water. It's an embodiment of the Dutch spirit and a testament to ingenuity and determination. And it all started with the simplest of ideas. No sea, no floods. Let's go back to the beginning. It's the late 1800s, and what is now known as the Ijsselmeer or Lake Ijssel, was an inland sea called the Zuiderzee, which means Southern Sea. The Dutch always had a complicated relationship with the Zuiderzee, as it tended to flood large pieces of land, including areas around Amsterdam. We needed a way to regulate its water level, but since it was directly connected to the North Sea, that wasn't an easy task. The plans to close off the Zuiderzee only became feasible at the end of the 19th century, when industrialization and inventiveness turned the tide and made it technically possible. This is when a bright civil and hydraulic engineer by the name of Cornelis Lely entered the scene. In 1891, when he was only 36 years old, Lely became the Dutch Minister for Infrastructure and Water Management, and he came prepared. Not everyone in the government agreed with his ambitious plan to close off the Zuiderzee, and it wasn't until the flood of 1916, when a storm surge caused dozens of dike breaches around the Zuiderzee, that he finally got the green light to start working on his dream. In Lely's vision, the Zuiderzee would become the Ijsselmeer, the largest freshwater lake in the Netherlands. It would become a hugely important source of fresh water used for agricultural irrigation, among other things. But we wouldn't be Dutch if we didn't go the extra mile. We also turned large parts of the sea into polders, which are pieces of land with very fertile soil. Creating an unlikely win-win scenario by being innovative became known as the polder model, which still serves as the baseline for how the Dutch tackle tough issues. Polders also gave us a new province, Flevoland, and the capital, Lelystad, was named after its creator. Back then, the go-to solution was to build and fortify dikes and dams along the entire coast. That's hundreds of kilometers of fortifications. Once Lely's critics took that into consideration, a 32-kilometer dam didn't seem that crazy anymore. Helping Lely with the scientific calculations was another remarkable man, Hendrik Lorentz, a Dutch Nobel Prize winner in physics. A man so smart, even Albert Einstein looked up to him. His involvement marked the start of a happy marriage between science and hydraulic engineering. It became the foundation for how we still work today. So, smart people made smart calculations based on smart methods. Now everything was ready for the heavy lifting, literally. Construction started in the 1920s. The builders used special erosion-resistant boulder clay, which they harvested from the seabed using steam dredges. Then they constructed shipping locks and huge discharge sluices using a brand new building material, reinforced concrete. Countless basalt stones were laid by hand. This was an immense job that took until 1932 to complete. Cornelis Lely, unfortunately, didn't get to see his Afsluit dike come to completion. He died in 1929. We're gonna take a giant leap in time now, right up to today. The Afsluit dike remained mostly unaltered since its construction, but that is about to change. 
As you've probably realized by now, the Dutch are not big on taking chances when it comes to water and safety. Safety regulations for dams and other flood defenses are much stricter in the Netherlands than in any other part of the world. Every 12 years, the embankments and storm surge barriers are assessed according to the latest insights. Based on the results of the latest assessment and with the impact of climate change becoming more visible every day, we decided now was the time for the Afsluit Dyke to get a well-deserved upgrade. Around 2008, research and planning started on modernizing this icon. It was going to be a sustainable upgrade while respecting the architectural and cultural history. The dam and its discharge sluices were to be reinforced and a brand new bike lane would be built near the Vadensee. So it would have a beautiful view of the nearby nature reserves, which also enjoy special protection. For more on that, we turn to our expert water engineer, Baz Jonkman. When formulating a plan for the Afsluitdijk, the designers wanted it to stand for at least 100 years without requiring major upgrades. It should therefore be able to withstand some extreme weather conditions. The dam is designed to withstand a water level of 5.2 meters above mean sea level and waves of 4.3 meters high. Storms like that only occur on average every 10,000 years. But even scientists and engineers cannot predict everything. That is why special measures were taken to make it easier to reinforce the Afsluit Dijk in the future, should it be necessary at that moment. We call this adaptive delta management. We'll discuss the dam's new design in a different video, but to give you a quick tip of the veil, as they say in Holland, an entirely new type of block was created, the level block. 70,000 of them, in fact. Rising sea levels make the discharging of water from the IJsselmeer increasingly difficult. So new discharge systems will be put in place, including new sluices and pumping stations. These pumping stations can work at all times and tides, but they require a lot of energy. The approach for managing the water levels is therefore discharging if possible, pumping when necessary. The goal is to keep using our discharge sluices as much as possible for as long as possible, while preparing the shift towards pumping when the sea level gets too high to use the discharge sluices. We'll do a deep dive on water level management in a different video, where we'll also talk about our fish-friendly pumps. Like many other dams, the Afsluit Dyke is a barrier for migrating fish, which used to swim in large numbers from the rivers upstream to the North Sea and back. Another important role of the Afsluit Dyke, which we haven't even talked about yet, is connecting two provinces. A major road runs across the dam in an environmentally vulnerable area. We aimed to keep a good balance between nature, traffic flow and safety during every step of the construction process. Innovations, coupled with an eye for nature and design, show what makes the Dutch approach to hydraulic engineering different. We don't just defend against water, we also use it to our advantage when we can. Take it from the country that produced back-to-back -back Olympic winners in windsurfing. Working together with nature is a winning tactic. We hope you learned more about the history and future of the Afsluit Dyke. In our other videos, we'll talk some more about the technical details like maintaining the water levels and creating the unique defensive level blocks. For now, thank you for watching and we'll see you next Tide.